Today's knife has just an incredible amount of attention to detail. It's actually quite impressive, even more so once you see the price. Hey, I'm Jay, and if you're looking to buy a knife and you need to see what it's like first before you drop your hard-earned money on it, here's what you got to do. Click on subscribe so I can help you, and remember to click that bell notification so you don't miss a thing. You should be looking at the specs right now, so for those of you interested, good spot to pause. So as usual, we will uh, go ahead and start out with what I like about this knife, and then we'll get into some of the potential deal breakers that I, that I see. But first, let's get the size comparison out of the way. And we're gonna start out with the Spyderco Para 2, and then how about the Cold Steel American Lawman, and how about a ZT? The 0450, CF and let's do one more the Benchmade bug out this is the Ultratech honey badger and for those of you that are really really short in on time I'll go ahead and say I do like this knife it's a fantastic budget option makes a great beater I love the aesthetics I love the function just not crazy about the materials used. You can actually get the Honey Badger in one of three different sizes. Now this one being the large with a 3.6 inch blade, but I also purchased, you can see here the medium, which you're looking at about 3.2 inch blade and then there is a small which I do not own and that one has about a 2.8 inch blade so first I want to talk about what initially drew me attracted me to this knife and it is going to be that that blade shape I, I just really I'm a sucker for a full flat ground drop point with a really nice satin finish and you can see it has a very generous forward finger choil. I mean, it's one you can actually use, which is great. And I think both, yeah, both are that way on the large and the medium. The action on both of these is just fantastic. I mean, look at that. Now you do have a couple deployment options being, of course, the flipper and that thumb hole there it's a little difficult for me to get my fingers in there let's see yeah well it works so yeah multiple uh deployment options and i believe it does shake close i mean it doesn't fall shut but if you give it a little bit of shake and bake yeah you can get it to close that way if we flip it over you can see you righties will definitely appreciate this the very generous thumb ramp for getting at that thumb hole. The detent is very, very strong. Cannot shake it open. And so that of course is gonna aid in the deployment, that and the ball bearing pivot. Now, as far as using the flipper for deployment, you can do the push button or the light switch both work i kind of i think the push button on this works just a little bit better now let's look up the lockup of the inset liner lock this one is locking up a little bit late at around 50 percent let's look at the medium that one yeah that's a lot better at about i don't know what would you guys say about 25 percent let's take a look at the centering of the medium it's good, it's not perfect. It's a little off to the left, as you can see. And I believe the same goes for the large one as well. Yeah, that one's off a little bit that way. Well, at least they're consistent with that. The scales are made from the 
fiberglass reinforced nylon, so the FRN scales, they are, they're pretty comfortable. And I don't know if you can see this, but they are contoured, so that also adds a little more to that comfort. And the traction is good. From the, you can see it has like a honeycomb kind of pattern on it. Yeah, that makes, that really does help with the with the traction handle thickness is not too bad on the big one it is over a half inch but it's just at 0.53 so it's not terrible this does come with a, a deep carry clip you can see standard which is really really nice and this is also something that i appreciate if you look at okay so they both have the same style clip but Ultratech, what they did is actually did not use the same clip on the large and on the medium. They scaled down the clip for the medium size. Very, very impressive. Now, there are no markings anywhere on the blade other than the blade steel, which, as you can see, is HCR 13 MOV. I really like the thickness of the blade stock here. On the larger version, you're looking at about three and a half millimeters thick. So that's nice and chunky. The thumb hole on both sizes that I own, I don't know if you guys can see this, but they actually are chamfered. I could not friggin believe that. Oh, I cannot wait to tell you guys how much this thing costs. Yeah, chamfered thumb holes. Spyderco, please watch this. Oh, I need to grab the scale. Let me grab the scale so we can see how much this is going to weigh you down. Now, before I go ahead and hoist this up on the scale, I just want to show you the inside. And yep, they did go ahead and skeletonize the liner on one side. So we are looking at, well, that's a little less than I thought, 3.9 ounces, which is gonna be roughly the equivalent of one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five AA batteries or one cold steel American lawman. Now you guys know that normally I could care less about the box, but I just had to show you the box for the Honey Badger because it is quite impressive. Uh, it does look like it's crush proof, but you can see it's got this little tab that if you very simply pull this out, uh, let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. Gosh, dang, that is in there tight. Holy cow. You get, there we go. So you get a card for, with their website, and uh, so you can uh, register your product for the warranty. You also get a little pamphlet that uh, talks about that warranty, and it also shows some other models that they have. So you can see one with a, it looks like they have gut hook, and... Ooh, what do they call this one? Huh, they call that the Honey Badger Claw. Anyway, okay, so you get that, you get that plastic baggie, but also, look at that. Taking a page right out of uh, one of Kaiser's old books. Remember when they used to include the, uh, the Torx tool? Yep, so one end is six and the other is eight. I just thought, that that was fantastic. And now the, the last item to uh, round out this section of likes is, well, it's gonna be the price. The top one, so this is the large, you're looking at 29 bucks. The medium is 26 and the small, I looked on their website and that is 24. Now, $29 for this is not a screaming great deal, but it's, it's not too bad considering what you're getting. I mean, it's nowhere near on the same plane as the Rake 
P801, I mean, because that is really just a deal that's very tough to beat, but it's not bad. Now, unfortunately, we have to go ahead and get into some of the potential deal breakers, because like with all knives, there is always a little bit of bad that goes along with the good. And so first potential deal breaker that I believe is probably one of the big ones would be the blade steel at 8CR 13 MOV. Now, it's is it it's not the worst steel, but is it's not the best. I mean, it is Oh boy, how do I put this? Adequate. Let's call it adequate blade steel. Um, do I wish it was better? Do I wish it was Sandvik or VG10 or 154CM? Absolutely, but we get 8CR13 MOV, which also explains why they're able to offer this at 2926 and the small at 24. Number two is going to be the well, the pocket clip. Now, while I do like the clip and the fact that it is a, a deep carry, it is just the one position. Yep, so no lefty option, and that position is gonna be just tip up, righties only. Jimping. Well, there is a ton of it. Okay, see, there's five areas of jimping on these knives. See if you guys can see that, so right here, on the spine of the handle, and then again here on the spine of the blade. And where are the others? Oh yes, the choil. Yes, the choil actually has, the forward choil actually has jimping in it. I don't know about you guys, but this is the first knife I have ever owned to have jimping in the choil. So, so what is that? We're at three areas and then there is, oh yes, on the flipper tab, that's number four. And number five is gonna be right here on the inset liner lock. And I gotta tell you, the jimping, it really feels like, it, it just reminds me of like the side of a dime, 10 cent piece. That's exactly what this jimping reminds me of. Next is gonna be the FRN scale. See if you guys can see this. Now I'm just doing it with one hand here and you can see there is just a little bit of flex on the scales. Now, I have been having a really tough time finding where this is manufactured because it is not mentioned anywhere on the box, on the literature that they included, or anywhere on the knife. Now, we can probably all guess where it's made, but I don't wanna to have to do that. You, you shouldn't have to search and dig for that information. It just should be made, well, apparent, and it's, it's not. The inset liner lock is very, very thin. Now, I know with, the, with nested liners like this, they usually are thin, but this one, oh yeah, that is just a pretty thin piece of metal in there. The inside edges of the handle are not chamfered at all, so some of you might find them, well, kind of sharp, because they are, you can hear that. Yeah, there is just a little bit of sharpness in there on the handle. So now just where does that leave us here with the Ultratech Honey Badger, well, I'm gonna tell you. First, I just wanna quickly remind you, click on that subscribe button if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. And I do have a question for you guys to comment on. And what I would like to know is what other knives have you seen, do you know about, that have a forward finger choil like this with the jimping on the inside of it because it's the first time I have ever encountered it. So please let me know down in the comment section below. 
this is a knife that comes in three different sizes, two different handle colors. I mean, you can get a large, you can get a medium, you can get a small. How friggin' awesome would that be if every knife was manufactured that way? Yeah, well, we can dream. But that would just be absolutely incredible. The, I mean, this knife makes just the perfect uh, beater blade. And now when I use the word beater, I, there's no negative connotation there. Uh, it's just this makes a fantastic user. I mean, one that if you damage it or lose it, it's not going to be the end of the world. Now, this, these are offered at a fantastic deal, but it's not as good as, you know, a $20 Ganzo with ball bearing pivot, 440C blade steel, or how about the $25 Kaiser Tangram Santa Fe? Still a good purchase, though.